Our next presenter is Jack Lee. He's a fourth year medical student coming from uh, Texas A&M and he's gonna present the dark side of the iris. All right. Good morning. My name is Jack Lee, fourth year medical student from uh, Texas A&M. Um, today I have a clinical case, um, so uh, thank you for your attention. Um, it, and the title of the presentation is Dark Side of the Iris. Uh, we have a 30 year old um, Caucasian male um, who, present, who was referred for red and comfortable uh, left eye. Uh, this has been going on for about nine months. Uh, and when we saw him, he did not complain of any pain or changes in vision. Uh, on review of his history, he did not really have any ocular history, uh, trauma, or surgery. Uh, his past medical history includes uh, diabetes, hypertension, reflux, depression. His allergies and medications are listed above. Um, on social history, he is a moderate alcohol user and a restaurateur. <coughs> on examination, his vision uh, pressures pupil, uh, visual fields, uh, extraocular uh, movements and alignments, and fundus exam are all uh, normal. Um, and <coughs> slit lamp examination of the left eye is presented. Uh, in the next slide. Uh, so this is an external photograph of his left eye, the eye that he's um, complaining of redness. Um, I'll go through a little bit of what I see, but if anybody has uh, uh, other comments, which should uh, be helpful, if you could, for my education. Um, it's out of battery. Uh, okay. Um, so when I look at this, what I see is uh, immediately I see here. Uh, this is a uh, I see a, a lesion here, a dark lesion, at approximately 6:30 to 8 o'clock. Uh, and I see I think this is this looks like a masked uh, lesion because I see this is actually changing the shape of the pupil here. On slit lamp exam, uh, slit beam examination. Um, we see that this is uh, this is appears to be a 3D lesion, which seems to be protruding out uh, into the anterior chamber. On a, a, high, a more magnified photo, we get a, we get more detail of the anterior surface of this lesion. Uh, on this photo, on the left photo here, we see that this is a uh, this appears to be a dark, uh, opaque, uh, uh, melanocytic lesion, and I think. Also, interestingly, if you see that the shadow here placed by the beam uh, also demonstrates that this is a 3D lesion which protrudes out. Gonioscopy was also performed on this patient. Um, and here, we see the lesion. We see the same lesion here from a different view. And there appears to be some angle involvement with this lesion. Uh, so to, to help me understand iris tumors, I simplify it down. Iris tumors are typically divided into cystic or solid. Uh, solid tumors are uh, comprise the majority, uh, at approximately 80% of iris tumors. Here I want to share some photos of what a cystic tumor looks like. Uh, on photo F, we see this is uh, a bubble-like uh, bubble -like, uh, lesion. Uh, typically cysts are, could be fluid-filled, uh, bubble-like, uh, smooth and often translucent. Um, D and E shows very well the fluid-filled nature of these lesions, and F shows the smooth, translucent bubble shape. Uh, this, now these photos, I present these photos because, to contrast with our photo because uh, ours does not look anything like a cyst. And ultrasound biomicroscopy was also performed, performed on our patient uh, to further elucidate the internal structure of this lesion. Um, here, uh, on ultrasound, we see here's the cornea, and the contralateral iris uh, demonstrates a, normal, uh, a more normal architecture of the iris, and here we see the lesion. Um, well, from what I see is, this is a solid, this appears to be a solid lesion which involves the entire stroma of the iris. And here, it's a little bit faint, but uh, on a higher quality on the machine, we can see that this uh, posterior border of the lesion actually extends behind the iris. Um, I don't know if Dr. Harry has anything to add on, on this image. Now, Rick, I see the solar body here yeah. in this view. Do you have other images to show the solar body at all? No, no this is the only view I have. 
Um, and so based on the UBM and our clinical examination, this looks, appears to be more of a solid tumor. Uh, solid tumors are broadly uh, divided into melanocytic and non-melanocytic. Uh, dark lesions or melanocytic lesions comprise the majority uh, of the lesions. And based on our clinical photo, this uh, appears to be more of a uh, melanocytic lesion. Uh, and the most common differential for melanocytic lesions are iris nevi, melanoma, and melanocytoma. Uh, here I want to show some photos of what these individual lesions may look like. A nevi is, a, uh, is a, one of the benign lesions of the iris. Uh, these are localized proliferation of melanocytic cells uh, that generally appear as darkly pigmented lesions in the iris stroma. Importantly, the uh, nevi does not extend beyond one millimeter into the iris stroma, or typically they do not. Um, the most important thing is that um, histopathologically, there's no cellular atypia and no significant increase in metodic activity. The second differential of a dark pigmented lesion is the melanocytoma. Um, some would say that melanocytoma is really just a really uh, specialized kind of iris nevus, but importantly, this is a benign, this is another benign lesion of the iris, uh, meaning that there would not be cellular atypia or uh, a greatly in increased metodic activity. Uh, these, these are typically dark brown to black dome-shaped masses, uh, and they, on examination, they have a granular and the classic descriptions mound of black sand appearance. Um, the surface could be cobblestone appearance or smooth. And iris melanoma is a true malignant lesion of the uh, iris. Uh, characteristics uh, of the iris melanoma are uh, they are typically located in the, in the inferior quadrant. They could, they, on average, they invade about 2.5 millimeters into the iris. Um, they, uh, they, they are associated with correctopia, ectropion uvi, hyphema, glaucoma, and extraocular extension. In our case, what kind of points us towards more of a malignant lesion is that there's a rapid growth of this lesion. He did, the patient did notice this within the uh, past nine months. It's located in the inferior location, and this appears to involve the entire thickness of the iris. So uh, a little information about uveal melanomas. It is the most common primary intraocular malignancy. Uh, uveal melanomas comprise about 5% of all melanomas. Uh, approximately 5.1 cases per million occurred in the United States. Among these melanomas, only about 3% of the, of the uveal melanomas are located in the iris, so this is a, a, a rare lesion. Um, Iris melanomas are most, common, most commonly occur in men, especially among Caucasians. Risk factors are UVV exposure, light skin, light, light color, inability to tan, so very similar to a skin melanoma uh, and dysplastic nevus syndrome. I also saw the welding was a risk um, as well. Uh, the presentation could be pretty nonspecific, which include blurred vision, some photopsia, floaters, visual field reduction, or simply a visible tumor. However, some cases could also be asymptomatic. Diagnosis could be made by uh, looking at the lesion from, with the slit lamp examination. However, further characterization with imaging modalities such as UBM or OCT could also be used, uh, such as in this case, to provide more information. So, in terms of imaging, which is better, UBM or OCT? Um, many centers have capabilities for both. Um, in a series of looking at 200 eyes, uh, confirmed cases of iris lesions, it was found that UBM provided much better resolution of the internal structure and the posterior border uh, of, this, uh, of iris lesions, especially among pigmented lesions. Uh, one example I want to draw attention to is, uh, is this here. This is iridocillary melanoma. Uh, and this, uh, this is a good example because this actually looks uh, quite like our lesion here. Um, you can see that with UBM, we have good internal structure, good uh, illustration of the internal structure of this lesion, as well as clear, deline clear delineation of the posterior border. The same lesion image with OCT, uh, with, with OCT we lost uh, the internal structure and the posterior border. And so, and so the conclusion would be that for an iris lesion, especially pigmented one, OCT would give us much more information. And here I just wanted to show that uh, the UBM here, in fact, uh, the, for this patient, in fact, does show us uh, good information about the internal structure and the posterior border. 
So what are some ways that the uh, iris lesions or iris melanomas can be treated? Uh, typically, the treatment is divided into surgery or radiation. And specifically, which treatment depends uh, is highly individualized and depends on location of the lesion, depth of invasion, size of the lesion, um, and patient preference. Um, some things I would point towards a surgical resection uh, often is um, if the lesion is in a place that surgery can easily reach. Um, brachytherapy uh, is, can deliver localized radiation um, and a, a radio plaque is sewn under the conjunctiva. Proton beam irradiation could be used to treat uveal melanoma which are located more posteriorly. And nucleation is a bit of a last resort in eyes in which the tumor is too big or radiation would destroy the vision um, anyway. And prognosis, uh, what is the prognosis for our patient? In patients who are between 21 to 60 years old, his risk of metastasis at uh, 10 years is just under 8% and risk of death uh, at 10 years is about under 3%. And this is so actually pretty high. Um, in, in pathology lab, Dr. Melmus, whenever we see a tumor, he would say, beware the yellow man with a glass eye. Um, so the most, fit, the, the most common location of metastasis is, is the liver. So in a patient who has uh, some distant history of, uh, of eye surgery and presenting with, uh, presenting with painless jaundice, uh, something to consider is could this patient have had a melanoma in the distant past. Uh, factors that pr are predictive of metastasis is, uh, is presence of glaucoma at diagnosis, extraocular extension angle seating, and uh, factors predictive of death is uh, the depth of invasion of the of the um, uh, of the lesion, uh, and, th and these statistics are actually more for uh, um, uh, the uveal melanoma in general than uh, specific iris. Iris, um, and so actually, uh, the risk of death is lower in uh, iris melanomas than uveal melanomas in general. Uh, elevated intraocular pressure, and I'd like to thank uh, Dr. Lin and. The neuro team, my preceptors, for putting up with medical students, and uh, like thank Nico for helping me go through the presentation. Yep, that's it.